So before we start, no, Wendy Williams is not dead, not legally or physically anyway, as of August 17, 2024. So we need to shove that up our asses before we begin, as this video is a continuation of that other one. So it's amazing, uh, the title, people don't pay attention to this stuff. The death of Wendy Williams and daytime talk show host with a question mark. So I was kind of referring to the whole thing about talk show hosts, not Wendy Williams herself necessarily, though I did focus on her. And it's amazing, uh, the average duration of people watching is a minute and a minute and 50 seconds. Get to, get to 4 minute 52 mark. 4 minute 52 second mark of this video. Has. Present tense. It, it'll explain it, okay? Wendy Williams' best friend, I want proof of life. So this is as recent as July 18th, the day I moved into this condominium. So I'll, I'll read this article, okay? So uh, if we can get past these pop-up windows. So Regina Shell is concerned about the health of her best friend, Wendy Williams, whom she hasn't heard from in over a year. Uh, Wendy turned, or Wendy Hunter turned 60 on Thursday. She remains under court-ordered guardianship and her diagnosis of primary progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. That's a milestone for anyone, Shell said Friday night during an appearance on News Nation's Cuomo. In fact, if in fact she were able to celebrate, she would have, and certainly with me. But Shell wants proof of life. This has been one year that we have not seen her face, heard her, and she's a very vocal woman, so I don't know what to do. I would like to know that she's alive and okay, Shell said. So, maybe she is dead. Maybe not. We don't know. Remember, remember, I had a question mark. I still have that question mark at the end of my original title. It's still there. I have not changed the title. The documentary Where's, Where's Wendy Williams came out in, Fri uh, in February, right after Williams' team announced she had been diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal uh, dementia. The documentary has faced criticism for its portrayal of wisdom. The producers, upon learning of her condition, admitted they wouldn't have proceeded had they been aware during filming. <laughs> what? Anyway. The, the talk show host's departure from the Wendy Williams show after a decade raised speculation. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of drama going on as far as this is going. Uh, she wants to know what's going on. Um, she doesn't believe she's still alive. There's a lot of bullshit going on. There's legal, legal matters in the way of the family even seeing her. So not even Wendy Williams' family knows what's going on. So even it says here in this one Yahoo article, Wendy Williams' family reportedly still have no access to her amid 60th birthday. So let me kind of change gears a little bit. So I want to talk about, I won't name the YouTuber, but there's this one YouTuber who kind of looks like a combination of these, these bald big dudes right here. Kind of a New Yorker from the East, right? Kind of a New Jersey, New Yorker kind of guy. And... Like, he made a couple of posts. Most of his time, most of the time, his posts have, and, and he never mentioned me in anything like, if I asked a question, he never mentioned me. So I'm going to do the same courtesy for him. However, um, he would always delete his posts, uh, his video posts. And I was always kind of wondering, like, what is that about? Like, okay, don't you ever review your videos before you post them? I do. Like, nine out of ten times, I have to. The only time I don't is live streams. And even then, I just check the live stream videos and see what I made. But he never checks his videos before he posts them. And then he is always post, post, uh, delete, post, delete, post, delete, post, delete. And he would talk about this in his community uh, forums. So then he got mad. I think uh, I pointed this out. And he deleted his post about that, his hundredth post about deleting the video that he made, even though he made the video for sure. And he was sure about making that. And then he made another post talking about uh, lolcow and that he was going to take time off of YouTube. But then he deleted that post. Two posts. Two posts deleted in one night. And then he came back like nothing happened and talked about and posted more videos and kept those videos. Now, I think I erred in one thing in making the last video about Wendy Williams. I don't think people are over it. I don't think they get, have, they have, they haven't gotten over the daytime talk shows. Now, this is as much as I want to see at this fucking podcast. Now, I feel nothing for Wings. I feel nothing for Keem. I feel nothing for Boogie. Um, I will say, though, the only episode of Lol Cal Live that I kind of liked was when Melanie Mack got, got in there. It was an isekai moment for Melanie Mack because she's usually on the Geeks and Gamers Tuesday nights or Friday night tights because she's usually with the right wingers. 
But that one time she was on there, she's like, well, where am I? This isn't Tuesday. Where, where am I? <laughs> she had no, completely out of her element, okay? It's like like putting me in a gay pride parade or suddenly I'm with the uh, the big black communities or whatever. I'm like, what am I going to do there? So, yeah, I mean, like, I just, I don't really care for this stuff. I think for me, I like to watch things that, I'll tell you what I watch at the end of this video, okay? But it's just drama on top of drama. They all look like trailer trash. They all look like inbreds and uneducated fucks who drink beer. They literally look like the kind of people that Kathleen Kennedy says all Star Wars fans are. And you see the Star Wars fans come out of the world and say, no, we look like this, right? But it's just really, it's like, like, do you really care about these people? Do you really? But I think people do. You know, it's easy to sit there and be dismissive and say that that because I don't like them and because they're loser looking people that everybody else hates them. No, they got millions of subs. They make money off of the YouTube. I'm talking about them, so therefore they win. I'm just some dumbass that's talking about them. So I just turned the whole thing off. Even in death, right? So, yeah. Um, this, these shows still go on. But what I want to say to the... And I know he's probably watching and listening too. But I want to say to this one YouTuber. And I, I talked about it in my... If you check my community posts, you'll, you'll know who it is. But anyway, be nice to him. Be nice. Be, be kind. Uh, he does some great 80s sci-fi content. He does some great uh, reflections on Lego building bricks and 1900s uh, atmosphere and stuff. Good old 1900s and the 1980s, you know, because he loves the 1980s. So be nice to him. Be nice. He's cool. Except for these things, because I, you know, I, I'm going to call out the BS. As I'm sure people will call out my BS. But yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this stuff, just might as well watch Jerry Springer, okay? Or even Maury Povich, who is not the father, who is the father, right? Remember when this guy was doing a current affair? For those of you who are my age, you remember when this guy was doing a current affair? Right, I think Christine Devine did a current affair as well, and then he did this whole thing. So he started out doing other things. You saw I me; mean, everybody started out as newscasters in unremarkable news stations in other states of the United States, and then they got this little gig here and this little gig, and then they do, then they become this famous. But this is, you know, what if you had to watch garbage shows? I and I said this before: you're better off watching Maury, you're better off watching Jerry, you're better off watching Steve Wilkos or whatever. Whatever idiotic inbred trailer trash fighting other trailer trash ghetto minority show you are watching, you better off watching this stuff. You know why? You know why? Because I'll tell you, because this stuff is on television and has a limited time to be on television. And once it gets off the air, that's it. Then you're disciplined to be like, oh, I missed Maury. I missed all of Jerry. Well, better move on with my day. But with LolCow or other YouTube videos, you can watch it any time, and you can watch it for hours. And it just it just eats your insides out. It's a poison. Now, to the YouTuber I'm talking about, you can, you can watch this stuff at any time. You can watch whatever you want, but it's better to discipline yourself watching television stuff with commercials and just like not even pay attention because this stuff doesn't take up your whole day. At least it takes up one hour of your day or so. But what do I watch? I'll watch Vine Sauce. I mean, this is Vine Sauce, okay? Some of my biggest inspirations, um, because this YouTuber talked about Boogie. I talk about Vinny Vine Sauce. Uh, he's one of my two main influences, maybe three, okay? So this is the channel. This is actually this is actually Vine Sauce, the extra sauce. As you can see there, that's the guy. And he, he got fine sauce, full sauce, fine sauce, regular, or fine sauce, extra sauce. Sometimes there's fine sauce Twitch clips. And besides Vinny Vine Sauce, there's also Varg Skeletor Joel from Sweden. Funny guy. He does some funny shit. I think he's a little more right-brained. Uh, there's also Desert Pagona, Ima Kuni, Lime Malicious, but they're more for humor. I think that they're people... You know what bothers me, okay? It's the fact that and let me see if I can find it because, but let me, let me get to the last inspiration. There's, there's Varg Skeletor Joel's insignia. Kali UK. Uh, and we, we still stay and communicate on, on X or Twitter. Uh, he still tweets. I still tweet. Uh, great guy. 
funny guy, funny reviews. Um, he doesn't review, he doesn't do much reviews anymore, in-depth reviews for ZX Spectrum games or Commodore, Amiga. I like those kinds of people that, uh, they're humor, they're just funny people. They, they don't get into fights with other YouTubers, okay? Uh, they don't, they don't piss me off by getting into fights like Review Tech USA, like Boogie, like, um, what's his name? Smash JT, or remember when, uh, Matt Jarbo was throwing, was uh, tossing boulders with his son, even though that was a big old lie. All these YouTuber dramas, and they're all corrupt people. And I just get tired of it. I can at least applaud Pat the NES Punk for kind of dropping out early. Angry Joe doesn't really get into fights. Um, he kind of stayed, he stays on his own lane. And I think I like that too, though Angry Joe is more, more of the sort of mainstream, like sort of upper class kind of YouTubers. Fine Sauce kind of stays more obscure. He has his own merchandise, but he kind of just does his own thing. He doesn't do the news. He just, he plays, he's on Twitch. He's a Twitch streamer, but he's also on, up on YouTube uh, posthumously or like if he does recorded videos. So that's what he does. I mean, this is, this is more of a acquired taste, but I don't, I'm so, so fucking tired of the toxic levels of YouTubers and even television. I mean, if you have to cover your face, if you, it, if a person cannot, not click on a video unless you're covering your face. Like you're insulting your audience. I've said this before, but here is the example. You have to cover your face to like get people to actually click on video. That's why I defended, one of the reasons I defended Rachel Zegler was because of the whole, yeah, just the idiotic right. I just, I'm just so tired of it. So I don't think as long as YouTube, as long as uh, people like to watch lol cow or podcasts where people are attacking one another or getting on in each other's faces or being, as long as people like that kind of stuff, they will always be relevant. The Maury Poviches, it, they may be dead, but there'll always be somebody doing these kinds of shows, whether it's Judge Asshole or Maury Povich. Uh, there'll always be somebody like that. And it just won't matter what anybody wants or what's good for anyone. So that's it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put the link to this in the original 3,000 views. Thanks for the 3,000 views, everyone. One minute and 50 seconds, and nobody watched beyond the one minute and 50 seconds of video. This is the problem. Like, what people just don't watch anything. You'll, you'll watch Jerry Springer. You'll watch Maury Povich. You'll watch the entirety, the entirety of those shows. But one minute and 50 seconds. I don't know. Who's, who's dumb? Who's really smart? Well, it's not because I, I can actually watch an entire video or sometimes I can skip around if they're going to repeat talking points. I can skip around. But people don't even skip around. Had you got to minute 452 of my video, you would have learned something. If you can do that for a larger YouTuber, if you can watch an entire video, yeah, of Angry Joe, of Vinny Vine Sauce, if you're going to watch an entire video of somebody else, you can give me that fucking time or you can unsubscribe to me. I don't, want to, I don't want people who are going to watch three seconds of a video and completely assume that they know what the fuck that I'm talking about when you fucking don't. Because one day, if let's say Alex Borstein says something really racist and then somebody says, oh, hemophiliacs, and then I go and defend my own people who have disabilities and people don't watch the entirety of that video or why this is happening or why that's happening in the news and you don't care to watch it, whose fucking fault is that? You want to live in your ignorance? Fuck you. Get the fuck off my channel. Don't ever come back. That's all there is to it.